Hi, I'm Cindy Wilson, and this is Home Sweet Home Craft Room Creations. Welcome to the craft room. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. If you've been here before, you know the routine. I'm going to make something, you're going to make something, we're all going to have a good time. Today's video is all about snowmen, so let's do this. Hi, welcome back. I have got an assortment of goodies here on the table this time, and we are going to make snowmen. You need some candles, you're going to need some tissue paper, plain old dollar store stuff. You're going to need some regular copy paper, some scissors, we need some battery operate, operated, sorry, tea lights, that's some of those, and some permanent markers, some black, some white. Not sure if we'll need the white, but we're gonna go for it anyway. And um, a pair of socks. That's what I need, and I need something to measure with, and I picked these little puppies up from Amazon. I will put a link to them in the description down below, and they are plastic fish bowls, candy dishes, disposable candy dishes, I think is what they call them. Sorry, clear plastic ivy bowls, excuse me, wrong term. But if you're going to use those, I would like to say I will put a link to those down in the description down below. And don't forget a glue gun. For the first snowman, we're going to do them on candles. If you have seen my Easter video, you'll know this process from that video. I'm going to use the same one where we transfer a printed image onto a candle. All you have to do is grab the tissue paper, put your copy paper over top of it. Then you're going to tape the copy paper to the tissue paper by overlapping the tissue paper ever so slightly around the edge of the copy paper. Tape it down securely on all four sides of that copy paper. You do not want this to come loose in your printer and make a big mess and it would be a nightmare. I've never had it happen but I imagine someone else has and it's not something I would want to happen. This time I'm using tape to put the uh, paper on with or, sorry the tissue paper onto the copy paper um, the last time I used a glue stick but because I could not find my glue stick I think it may be empty or the cat stole it I'm not quite sure which it is but um, I've used glue sticks before and it works just fine just don't over goop it on the edge and then uh, it won't stick inside your printer but either way whatever you have is fine tape or glue stick attach that tissue paper on and uh, away you go. Snowman I am going to use for this candle is something that I found when I googled snowman faces SVG and I did that because I'm at some point I'm sure I'm going to use this in my Cricut. If you're going to use Design Space to print your image, do not forget to turn the bleed off. You want these images to be crisp and clean. Okay, printed out just fine. No issues. It did not come off of... The tissue did not come off of the copy paper. All is good. I'm just going to cut the actual faces off because I don't need the rest of it. The marking lines that come with the design space when you print with it of no use to me right now but it worked just fine for printing the snowman out. So what we're going to do is decide which one I want on the candle and uh, get the... oh that was another supply I suppose I should have told you about. Um, I'm going to use a heat gun to do the transfer on this one. Um, you can do it with a blow dryer. I have never done it with that, but I've seen it done. So whatever you have or whatever you've got to work with, by all means. And I just have to decide which of these will all fit on there fairly well. I tried to size it so that each of the pictures was about two inches by two inches. And uh, some are a little bit bigger, but that's okay. 
I think we're going to go with him. I kind of like that one there. All right, so we're just going to take that. We're going to cut it out and away from the rest. Doesn't matter about the shape, just so long as he is on there, which is going to be like, like so. I'm going to put that little face right there. Position it down a little bit lower here because we're going to we're going to give them a little toque. That's what the socks are for, and I just don't want um, it to be an issue that um, his eyes get covered up by the toque. So for the next part of your candle building snowman, you're going to need either parchment paper or wax paper. Nice and easy transfer happens with this, a glue gun. You can use a blow dryer. I have not used a blow dryer. The only catch is with this is whatever side is shiniest of your wax paper or parchment paper, make sure that is the side that goes down against your image and your candle. Um, you'll see here in a second that I made my parchment paper is what I'm using. I made it just a little bit shorter than I should have. Um, it's a better idea, if possible, for the sake of not burning your fingers, to make that piece of paper just a little bit longer so it wraps completely around the back of the candle. And you can kind of grip onto it instead of having your fingers coming up over the side of the candle the way mine are. And it does get a little bit warm. So just be careful, make sure that paper's a little bit longer and then from there, all you're going to do is put that blow dryer, or sorry, that uh, heat gun on a, oh, I think I've got it on a high setting, and start using it gently across the face of the end. Keep the glue gun moving at all times. Do not hold it in one spot for any length of time. Constant movement is the catch here. You will see a change in the, the color of the image underneath the wax paper once it starts to transfer you can pull the pa or the paper back at any point checking just do not move the tissue paper in any way shape or form otherwise you will distort your image our next little snowman sorry about that i bumped the camera just as i hit play our next snowman is going to be so easy it's ridiculous you're going to take plain old everyday tea lights and um, there you go, flame okay. those two lights. Got the permanent marker, gave him a couple of eyes, and the mouth, aka little pieces of coal. You start at the center of his face and do, I'm going to do five across the bottom on mine. And like I said, this is about as easy peasy as it gets for making a little snowman. There you go, we got a quick face. And we'll light up his nose. I think that's adorable. And give me a second, I'll show you another little trick with him. If you want to change up your snowman and kind of up your snowman game just a little bit, get yourself a small roll of magnetic tape. I happen to have this in the craft room. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna straighten it out I'm going to put a section of it across his back like so with the sticky side of course to him i'm going to do a little extra um, craft glue on there um, hot glue on there to make sure that it stays and then he's going to become a fridge magnet the third snowman is where our plastic globes are going to come into play i just put together a quick little basket with um, some plastic on the bottom of it it's going to be my drip tray, I guess you could call it. And uh, with the help of little wooden skewers that I had here in the craft room, the globes, once they're filled with paint and need a place to drip, will have just that by setting them upside down on top of those wooden skewers. I use chalk paint for the inside of my globes. Use whatever you have in the craft room, acrylic or what have you. Swirl the paint around there, give it a good coating on the inside, turn it upside down, and let it drip dry. All 
Okay, globes are dry on the inside, a little caked um, with paint on the inside, which was fine because I'm going to put them together even though it's going to give my snowman a bigger, bulkier neck. I'm not 100% sure. I will find something thicker though for his scarf to kind of camouflage his ostrich neck. And the snowman faces that I had left over from the candles. We're going to take one of those, find a good position, kind of midway in it. I think we're going to trim that out and we're going to Mod Podge it onto the face of the globe or the snowman's head, excuse me, for his hat. I'm going to take a piece of paper towel roll and basically there and we're going to cut it off i'm thinking about inch inch and a half up i don't want it too big but i don't want it too small and squatty either it doesn't matter if it gets flattened you just round it back up once it's cut we're going to cover that in black cardstock or craft board, one of the two anyway, make a brim for the hat. And uh, yeah, let's get going. top of his hat ended up being an inch and a half circle just measured it with the uh, the tape measure there cut a circle and um, glued that on top of the hot glue gun the brim of the hat ended up being three inches I believe I made it double the size of the actual topper for the hat just to, to make it stick out just enough around the base of it glued it all together sat one of the globes on top of it to hold it in place while the glue set there's actually just a bit of Mod Podge around there too, which will dry clear when the time comes. And uh, I'm going to Mod Podge the whole hat, in fact, to give it a solid... Um, it, it'll, when the Mod Podge hardens, it'll kind of firm it up just a little bit more, and I wanted that kind of an effect for it. I just didn't want a flimsy piece of paper sitting on top of his head. And speaking of Mod Podge, I put his face on with a very light coat of Mod Podge, and then over top of it another light coat when the paint sorry not when the paint when the Mod Podge dried it kind of it was fine itself it was just the edge of the paper was very prominent against the sides or against the globe and uh, so I decided I needed to kind of camouflage that a bit so I took a bit more of that chalk paint that I had and I added a little bit of thicket to it just to kind of give it a chunky feel. I could have used baking soda or baking powder, any one of those kind of thing uh, as well too, to kind of give that snowy effect, I guess, to the globe. And um, I went around the face along the edge of the paper that was sticking out quite badly that I really didn't like and uh, closed it all in and camouflaged it that way. Ended up thinking, well, I may as well do the whole head to uh, make it uniform, make it look like it was a deliberate effect, I guess, <laughs> when it was actually camouflage in the beginning. And after I did the head, I also did the body part. And that way both pieces were matching and uniform. The snowman needed mittens. For his mitten, I used uh, a piece of faux suede that I had in the craft room 
drew a small mitten on the back of it so you could see it nice and easy, cut out the first one, used that as my template, made four separate pieces, making sure to um, reverse them so that there would be a front and back with the wrong side of the suede facing together. His arms were um, um, paper covered wire, I believe it was called. And I took like four, three or four strands of that and uh, twisted them together to give it like a branch look kind of thing. And uh, took some um, hot glue, put it down on the inside of the one mitten, put the branch arm into uh, the mitten, center of the mitten, and then took the other half of the matching mitten and uh, glued that as well down and put the two pieces face to face together and uh, enclosed a hole end of the branch together. Just hold it in place while the glue sets and uh, if there is any openings, gaps, once everything has cured, set, what have you, just go in very gently with some glue and close it up with that and uh, you should be good to go. And we're going to, these are dry believe it or not, and I think I much prefer this look here and so we're going to go with that. We're going to go with the hat. Um, I'm thinking, eeny meeny, I'm not sure where I want to put the glue. If I want to put the, the glue on the hat itself, or I'm going to go with the hat. Hold it into position. There we go. Tilt the brim down just a little bit here. I think we're going to be okay. And the moment of truth comes in with, whoops, these. I'm going to do, I don't know. I'm thinking I need to thin them out a bit more. They're just a little bit too bushy. And his hat's just a little bit too small. For major bushy greenery. Just trim it back a little bit and I think I can do two then if I just trim the back. So this one needs to be, excuse my disaster zone here, take that back. I'm just gonna kind of thin them down a little bit. Um, I'm thinking yes and yes off to the side. Once I got the greenery attached, um, I looked around the craft room and I had found something called a nail polish flower. I don't know if you've ever seen anybody do those before, but it's really a cool process where you shape the wire into or some thin wire into the shape of a petal, dip it into nail polish, let it form like a skim coat across there and keep dipping it until you get a nice little um, sturdy, I guess is the word I'm looking for, petal. Make five of them or whatever you want for your amount of flowers and uh, put something in the center and you have a, a really cute, adorable flower. Well, that's going to be on the top of his hat. I just punched a hole in there kind of thing and give it a little guide space, glue that into place. His scarf is uh, just a piece of regular fabric or plaid fabric that I had here in the craft room and quick little seam of glue on it kind of thing to hold it together and get it to hold its shape. And I ended up using, I think it's about 16 inches long um, for that piece there, 14 or 16, I can't remember, to, uh, to make it long enough to go around his overly thick long neck. <laughs> so that's going to be the game plan for that. Part A is going to be glued onto part B for the uh, the head and body to join. To attach the mitten's arms, I use the tip of the glue gun because the vase jar is plastic. It does melt. It takes a bit of energy and a bit of pushing on it. And I was a little scared too, um, for fear that I was going to crack the globe after all of this, but it didn't. Once his head is glued into place, you can wrap that scarf around his neck. 
I took a pair of scissors afterward and gave him little one inch fringes around the bottom or at the sorry at the end of his scarf to kind of make it look a little bit more realistic and that turned out just fine as well I chose not to try tie a knot around um, his neck I thought it would be too bulky and then I'd be fighting with getting things to lie down properly so it's just a quick crisscross across the front of him to hold it in place you could put something over top of the front of it if you wanted to but I thought he was just fine as is and uh, things kind of went in another direction you'll see in just a minute okay so this is the part where things went a little different I don't know if about anybody else crafts like this but I can change my mind in a heartbeat with something or suddenly remember that I saw something in the craft room that I thought would really look cute well I had these two boot ornaments um, that came from Dollar Tree I think they cost me a couple of bucks a piece so it was nothing serious and I had them here and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with them I knew there would be some crafting happening with them well I kind of looked at them and I kind of looked at his scarf and I went wow it's it's plaid it's close and I'm thinking this little guy needs skates on his feet and here are all three snowman projects all together I think they turned out absolutely adorable I hope you like them too thanks for hanging out with me this afternoon this evening this morning wherever you are hope to see you again I really appreciate you being here bye bye if you enjoyed this video and are interested in seeing more videos from my channel consider subscribing I would really appreciate that hit the little bell icon so you get notified every time I post a new video thanks again